Christopher Weston. That's a powerful word he's preaching from Sunday. And you will be blessed if you journey your way over to YouTube, Christopher Weston, and, and, and feast on the word of God. Hey, good to, good to have you, Pastor Weston. That's a powerful word. I was, as they say, I was eating real good. <laughs> that was a great word, great word. I'm just, I'm just so excited about the ministry and, and the word that you laying into the house over at, at the stone. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Amen. Wonderful. Sister Pamela Horn, Sister Nicole Tate. I see you, Nicole. <laughs> I can see them for that's well, it's not simple, but like two seconds time they recognize that I'm I've spotted them, then the camera go off. <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. Good to have y'all Facebook Live. This is the Word of You Bible study, questions and answers, where we're here to answer questions about the Bible, about life. There's a word of God that applies to every life situation. Someone say, every life situation? Of course. They say, it's everything in the Bible. I said, why would God give us an incomplete book? The problem is not the book. The problem is you have to study to show yourself approved. You have to search the scriptures. Yeah, it's all in there, but you have to search the scripture. And it won't be talking directly about smoking, but you can search the scriptures and, and find out about various topics that people think that are not in there. Amen. Got people still coming in. Sister Sharon Lewis. Amen. God, glad, to, glad, glad to have you. This is Bernadette. Glad to have you. We got several people on Facebook. Amen. So this it's time to get started. I've been anxiously waiting for Tuesday so that we could get back into how to forgive your enemies part two. We talked on uh Last Tuesday, got started, got the pump prime. We got to go scuba diving. We got to go a little deeper into this. Pastor Weston, are you available to where you can give, lead us in a word of prayer? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Let us pray. In the name of Father, once again, Lord, that we humbly bow before you to say thank you, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for all your many blessings. We thank you, God, for last night's rest. And we thank you, God, for waking us up this morning with a mind stayed on you, God. We Thank you, God, for keeping your hedge protection around us, Lord, and dispatching the angels that keeps us from danger, seen and unseen, Lord. Thank you, God, for allowing us uh, the mindset uh, to come and study your word so that we might do just a little bit about your character. Yes, yes. Thank you, God, for a leader that immerses himself in that word so that he might rightly divide it before us, your people. Lord. We ask, God, that you allow us, Lord, uh, to be hearers, but not only hearers, but be doers of your word. Yes, these blessings and all of the blessings of the authority and power given known to us by Christ Jesus. And we say amen, 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 amen. amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Weston, for that wonderful prayer. Pastor Weston, bless us by putting in the chat your YouTube channel in the chat so that everybody that can see that chat. I want you to go support the ministry of Pastor Weston. He's doing a great job. And, and our, our effort, <clears throat> our responsibility is to assist and the expansion of the kingdom of God. See, people say that to build up, the kingdom is already built up. It don't need to be built. <laughs> we, we can expand it though, by the word of God being sent from, from, from various pastors and ministers to who preach the, the unadulterated word of God with, with truth and in spirit. And uh, so that we can all be made whole. That's the intent of God, nothing lacking, nothing incomplete. All right, so here we go. How to forgive your enemies, part two. And I, I didn't get a chance to go make some comments on all the comments that came in, but the, the key scripture that we start, I'm going to recap, and then we're going to go back into part two a little bit deeper. It starts with St. Matthew's, the twelfth, the sixth chapter, and the twelfth verse. Thank you, Pastor Weston. Y'all click on that link, take that link and copy and paste it. <clears throat> and go to that YouTube, and so we can support Pastor Weston, but more than support him, we need word. Can you get enough word, Tom Paul? Absolutely not. <laughs> You're right, Bishop. I didn't, I didn't even give you a chance to answer. I just went and spoke in advance. No way. Amen. And God has given us all of his preachers a unique way of delivering, and everybody don't reach everybody. So that's why God got more than one. 
Amen. So let's go to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. And we're going to read this verse because this was the foundational verse where Jesus, in the Lord's, what that we call the Lord's Prayer, is, is, is admonishing us and challenging us to forgive. And he, he includes it in the prayer. I'm over here in Mark. That's why I can't find it. I'm so excited I can't even get to Mark. Mark the sixth chapter. And we're going to look at the 12th verse. Now, if your Bible is like my Bible, uh, the Lord's Prayer is in red. And that means, Sister Michelle Turner, that means Christ Jesus is talking. Jesus is talking in St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. And in red, and when he speaks in red, he's speaking in Aramaic. Jesus spoke Aramaic, so the red means he's speaking in his language. He's not speaking Greek. Greek didn't come to way later, but in the early century A.D., when you see that red is Jesus. Here's what he said in verse 12. He says, "As we pray, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors." And we talked about what the word forgive mean. The word forgive in Aramaic means to untie. So he says, untie us from our debts as we untie our debtors. All right. In some, some Bibles, the word is not debt, it's trespass. Either way, the word trespass in Aramaic is koba. It means owe me. Right? Owe me. So let's read verse St. Matthew 6 and 12 again, and untie me from what I owe you as we untie others who owe us. You get that? It's all about untying yourself. And he's saying that if we don't untie ourselves from others who owe us, then he won't untie us from what we owe him. And I know I can get a witness here that we owe him everything. <laughs> we owe him Everything. I wish my I had one of those bass voices because I would say it like with a deep bass voice. We owe him everything. So we're saying, forgive us, untie our thoughts of what we owe you, as we untie the thoughts of what others owe us. Right. And the dilemma here, uh, Denny, is that we 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 our thoughts have been caught tied up with the individual who we believe owe us. And it's an enemy. There's three kinds of enemies. Sometimes we think about the person who is trying to destroy us. All enemies are not trying to destroy us. There are certain kind of people who want to hinder our spiritual progress. There are people who want to rain on our parade. That's called opposed. We went into the three kinds of enemies. But what are, what are our trespasses against God? So many, so many, right? Uh, hating and disliking is a trespass against God. If you if you dislike somebody, I just Sister Hooks, good to see you. Look, if I I, don't, I just I just don't I just don't like them. Do you not know that that's a problem? So God says, since you believe that they owe you something, when we dislike somebody, normally because they don't agree with us, right? And we don't know that disagreement is good. Conflict is bad. <laughs> There's nothing good about conflict. But disagreement helps us to see a different dimension of something we thought we understood. So he says that there are two things. There's so many, but I just want to pick up two tonight to show you how we owe him and how so easily it is for him not to untie his thoughts from what we owe him because we won't untie our thoughts from what people owe us. Let's go to the first one, First John the fourth chapter, First John, the fourth chapter. We're going to look at the 20th verse. First John, all the way back there near Revelations, First John 4 and 20. All right. Y'all right, got First John 4 and 20? Because we're talking about hating, disliking, and people opposing us, and all these things that we get all tore up about. I mean, we really, we say, I'm just tore up about it. No, you're not tore up. You're tied to it. You're tied, your thoughts are tied to it. First John 4 and 20. He says, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is 
a liar. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Paul, what kind of book are you reading out of? Because I, I didn't know that God called some people a liar. He said, if a man say I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So God already said we trespassed against him. The moment when we look at somebody and say, I hate them or I dislike them. He said, how can a man say I love God and not like his brother? He is a liar, right? So that means now, now I don't lie, Tom Paul's. I don't sin already. But unfortunately, we're going to get down to this later. I didn't ask, for, I didn't confess that sin. So therefore, God still holds that sin accountable to me. Every time I look at somebody and say, I don't like them, or I hate that person, and guess what? That's a sin. Lying is a sin. I wish I was at church because I would look at you, tell you, touch your neighbor, tell them, lying is a sin. <laughs> lying is a sin. But we don't see that as a, as a sin. Matter of fact, we don't see that as lying. As a matter of fact, we don't consider ourselves a liar. But God said, you're a liar. If you hate somebody and say, I love God. With one, he said that sweet water and bitter water can't come out of the same well. You can't say to God, oh God, I love you. I ain't never seen them. And turn around and see somebody and hate them. So we've already trespassed. Whether they're somebody did something for against us. Someone mentioned about, I think Ola brought up the fact that some people still hold on to slavery. I just don't like white people. Some people got that attitude. But well, God says, you are a liar. If you're in church waving your hand in the air like you just don't care. All right? That's one. That's a trespass. Let's get number two, and then we're going to move on. Let's turn to Romans. Go back to Romans, the 14th chapter. Romans, the 14th chapter. We're going to look at the 23rd verse. All right? Romans, the 14th chapter. And we're going to see verses number 14. And we're going to read 14 through 23. I got this Bible. I love this Bible. But why do they put all these pictures in here? I don't Cause me to stumble around a little bit. But Romans 14 and 23. All right. Here we go. Romans 14, chapter 23rd verse. Paul, is, Paul looks like he's talking about uh, eating and drinking what's in front of you. But he says in verse number 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. So, so now we a lot of people uh, then put a period right there. But he says, for whatsoever is not of faith, that's the part. Forget about the eating. He said, for whatsoever is not of faith is what sin. So every time I have a, no faith, lack faith, God looks at me and said, you just trespassed. You committed a sin. The lack of faith is what? Sin. Isn't that what it says, Denny? It says right there. Whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. When was the last time we confessed to God? God, forgive me for my lack of faith. We don't. <laughs> Some of us say, well, Bishop, I didn't know that the lack of faith is a sin. Why aren't you glad you came to Bible study tonight? Because you just learned something. Tonight, that perhaps you didn't know that you have not confessed to God about. So God said, that's a trespass. You owe me. Because the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So every time we have faulted in our faith, we sinned. We committed a trespass. We owe God faith. So therefore, guess what? God said, how can I untie my thoughts about what you owe me when you want to untie your thoughts about what you owe others, all right? The Lord forgives our trespasses as we forgive others, all right? So when you love somebody, we talked about this, when you love somebody, you store in your mind and heart that you love that person, right? It's, a, it's all about the thoughts. When you love somebody, you store in your mind and your heart that you love the person. And because of that, you officially connect yourself to that person. It's an emotion. It's a feeling. That's why some people look at somebody and say, what in the world are you doing with that person? But what they don't understand is it ain't got nothing to do with people's opinion. It's got to do with 
your emotions and your thoughts, right? It's how you, you your thoughts about them. The same way a mother thoughts about her children. People may say, your children are just bad. You say, I love my kids. Don't you talk about my kids. Why? Because their thoughts and their emotions, right, connect them to their children, right? So the same thing is with hate. Hate is an emotion. Hate is a thought. So when we hate a person, we're connecting ourselves to that person. Just like I think about the people I love, when I hate somebody, I think about the person I hate. It's all what? It's all a thought. So it's the same emotion created by what? Thought. We talked about that, right? The same emotion. One is positive. One is negative, negative, but they come from thoughts. So when we dislike or hate anyone, we become bound to them by our thoughts. We get caught in a net of all hurt feelings, grudges, and events. All right. So if we don't forgive, watch this time, pause. We become prisoners of our own thought. Yeah. They can have done it 10 years ago, right? And we're still holding on to it. And the moment somebody bring up that person's name, we relive the experience that happened 10 years ago. You know why? Because we're tied to them. Our thoughts are tied to them. They done moved from North Carolina to California. But if that name come up, that Facebook page come up, you know, we're going to remember because we didn't realize that it's a thought thing. It's an emotion thing. And the brain don't know the difference between the emotions. It just says, oh, you're thinking about them? I'm going to connect you to that person. All right? And that's why Christ gives us instructions on time my thoughts. And, we, and we're going to get into how do I do that in, in just a moment. So if we don't forgive, we become prisoners. Of, we become tired and cannot move forward. Unge unforgiveness ties us to the people we don't like or ties them to us. They don't like us. They sit around thinking about you all the time. Sister Crozier, they're thinking about your enemies is losing sleep, thinking about you. You know why? Because they're tied to you. They don't even know it. They're tied. They can't get you off their mind because they believe you owe them something. It's all about what you owe me. See, the thought, and that I used the example Tom Paul's and said if a man... I uh, owed my brother $2,000 and didn't pay him back. Every time that name comes in his mind, he's going to think about that man. He owed me $2,000. He owed me. He owes me. Watch this. If that man came to Greenville, Mississippi, stepped on his front porch, rung the doorbell, and he opened up the doorbell and said, I got a bag here with $2,000. I want to pay you back. He immediately Tom Paul's mind shift from, I don't like him to come on in and let's have something to drink. You want something to drink? You know why? Because he got paid back. Are y'all listening to this? It's all about they owe me. Somebody disrespected you. Your thought got tied to them. But the moment they come back and say, I apologize. Guess what happens? Your mind unties you from that. And guess what? You no longer have those thoughts or that unforgiveness. All right. So how do we get rid, get untied? That's the real question. And we talked about renew your mind, right? Let's go to Romans 12 and 2. I'm just bringing this up to speed and then we're going to go a little deeper. Romans 12 and 2. Here's what Paul says. Romans 12 and 2. Time moves too fast. This is already 622. Romans 12 and 2. I'll give you all a moment to get it. Very familiar scripture. It's been preached and preached, but nobody really told us what the word renew means. So we got to dissect this identity. Here we go. And be not conformed to this world. Don't do it the way the world does. Because look, the world says, you, you mess with me. Let me go get my nine millimeter. You know what that means, the nine millimeter. That, that is not a ruler. That is a gun, right? And, and let me deal with you, right? Let me meet you outside the Haynes Mall in the parking lot. That's what they did. He said, but don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He said, if, 
He said, the only way for you to comprehend God's complete and good, perfect will, complete will, is that the mind has to be renewed. And that's not, the word that renewed does not mean getting a new mind, right? But it means something different. So let's examine what that means. The word renew in Hebrew is Kadash, and it means repair. We are digging this tape. We have to work on repairing our mind. Listen, we, Jerry Patton, we have to repair the mind, right? And then he says, renew the mind. So the second word is mind. The word mind in Hebrew is know me. It means thought, right? So here's what Paul, let me read it again and put the translated word in it because so, it'll make more sense. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the repairing of your thoughts. Ah, right, now it's making sense to me. See, I got to work on my thoughts. Yeah. A, a man, a man, a man who's, who, who's trying to solve a problem, he uses his what? Thoughts. The thoughts get broken when someone hurt us, when someone abused us. A lot of people say, they need a therapist. What does the therapist, what is the therapist's job? Technical therapist's job is to help you with what? Your thoughts. Yeah. Is to untie, uh, then a therapist's job is to untie what? Your thoughts. That's why people go. You lay, you sit in a chair, lay on the couch, whatever, whatever method they use, and they let you talk and ask you questions. And, and as you talk, you begin to un untie yourself. You begin to untie the thoughts that were what? Tangled up. That's what happens. So, and we pay a lot of money for therapists. I mean, a lot of money. And, and uh, I, I know a person by the name, last name of Nameless, who's been going to a therapist for the last 10 years and go once a week and sometimes three times a week and told me, I wish I could go every day. And I said, why would you want to meet that? Because it just helps my, my mind. What this person don't understand is all they're doing is what God's word can do, which is help to repair the mind, right? We must learn how to repair the mind. We must learn how to repair the mind. So Bishop Hawks, that's good. But tell me, what, what are the steps to repairing the mind. We started last week on, on this verse, and now we're up to where we stopped last time. Let's go to Philippians, the sixth chapter, and we're going to look at the seventh and eighth verse. The sixth chapter of Philippians. Wait a minute, did I get the right verse? No, it's fourth chapter. I'm sorry, fourth chapter. Let me change it. I don't know where that six came from. The fourth chapter. And we're going to look at verse number seven. It says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your mind, your hearts, and thoughts, emotions and thoughts through Christ Jesus. How do we do that? Through prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, right? But then Paul said in verse eight, Finally, brethren, here we go. How do I repair my mind? Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's the first step, then. In repairing our mind, we have to train our thoughts, right? To re we have to repair those thoughts. And, 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 and the way you repair your thoughts is you got to think not negative thoughts, but you got to think what? Positive thoughts. Because the, the brain automatically is a computer. It's going to remind you of everything that ever happened to you. But you have to repair your mind by every time that thought comes up about what they did to you then you have to think about what's good. Yeah, did they do it? Yes, they did. But are you better? Yes, I am. 
did, did, did God let you, did God let you dis, be destroyed? No, he didn't. Uh, David said, now I know that God favors me because he didn't allow my enemies to overpower me. I just got happy. You mean to tell me God was proving to you that he had favor in your life? So he didn't let your enemies who tried to destroy you, they couldn't. Well, all of a sudden, instead of me thinking about what my enemy did, I'm thinking about what God did. He did not allow them to overtake me, overpower me, right? Because he showed me favor. Mm -hmm. Now, when you realize that you got the favor of God in your life, Tom Paul, it shifts your whole thoughts from the negative to the positive. I wish I had somebody that could talk back to me. See, the problem is I'm thinking about all the negative. Uh, the guy said, is the class half full or is it half empty? Some people, Sister Gail Crozier, always think that the glass is half empty. <laughs> but there are those people who say the glass is half full, right? So it's all about your thoughts. And Paul said, think on positive things. Think on things that are a good report. Don't sit thinking about somebody across town who's already turned over three times in their sleep, sleeping real hard and making a lot of noise. <laughs> Stop thinking about people who have moved on in their life and ain't even thinking about you. But you're so tied to them through your thoughts that you can't that you're living a miserable life because you can't get over what they did. I'm gonna take the scripture was trespass me old. In other words, here's what you're saying. The reason why I can't get over it is because they owe me. And sometimes, watch this, Sister Michelle Turner, sometimes all they owe you is an apology. Whatever it is that you think they owe you ties you to them in your thought. And Paul says the way you repair that mind is you replace the negative thought with whatever is good and perfect and lovely. He said that being in virtue, being in praise, I can't think about what I don't have because I'm too busy thanking God for what I do have. I can't think, I can't spend time thinking about what happened to me because I'm, I'm too busy thinking about what's happening to me. I can't think of, I can't take all this time thinking about what I've been through. I'm too busy shouting about what I'm going through. You see, it's all about your thoughts. All of, and Paul said the way to repair that is you got to put the positive in your head. And whenever the negative comes in your head, until you get completely untied, then you have to replace those thoughts. All right? That's number one. Number two is, and number two really is number one, you got to give expecting to receive nothing. Here, what, let me repeat that again. You have to get Kathy Wood. See, the reason why we have enemies is because we gave to them expecting to get something back. I gave you $20. I expect $20 back. And you don't give me my money back. Now I'm going to have words with you. And the words turn into an argument. Argument turn into a conflict. Conflict turn into possible fight. Verbal fight. Physical fight. Now I have an enemy. But see, Christ's attitude was, why are you giving with expectation of receiving? See, now you get the, the easy thing is to say no, but see, people don't like to say no because they want to be seen as this good, great person who loves everybody. Paul didn't even say, he said, if it's peace, if it's possible, he said, if it's possible, live peaceably with all men. Paul already knew it was not possible to get along with everybody, but we just want to be this good, super saint. And everybody said, well, you know, they're such a great person. So we do things without thinking, right? And, what, and when we give anything, we're giving, expecting what? Something back. And when we don't get nothing back, guess what? Here we go. Now my thoughts get tied to them. Because what? They owe me. Yeah, they owe me. They owe me something. And until they give it back to me, then guess what? I'm not over that. I'm not over that until they give me back what I expect. But Christ says, we shouldn't do that. We should give. So, so we should give, but not expecting anything, right? We should give to people and not expect. I don't know. When we give something to somebody, we should not expect 
anything. We got to find out what, the, what this word give mean then. We got to go a little deeper than this thought part. So this, this is getting deep right now. Because see, our English version of give is not the same way Christ looked at it. We got to give expecting nothing in return. Let's go to St. Luke. St. Luke, the sixth chapter. See, I'm one of those people that somebody say, hey, can I borrow some money? Now I says, no. He said, what? I don't, I don't, I don't let you borrow money. I mean, I'm not a bank. I'm not a lending institution. But I, but if you, if, but if you're trying to better yourself, I'll give you a hundred dollars. Yeah. But I'm not going to loan it to, cause see, if I loan it to my brother Tom Park, if I loan Tom Park five hundred dollars, he said, let me, let me borrow five hundred dollars. I'll pay it back Friday. I'll give him the Friday. But by the next Friday, hey, little bro, <laughs> did you forget something? But if I gave him $500 and say, look, you need that to get yourself straight. Am I, Tom, am I looking for anything back? No. So it can't be no thought tied to him because I gave it expecting what? Nothing in return. Let's go to St. Luke, the sixth chapter and the 35th there. This, this Pastor West and I talked about, this is one of the most misquoted scriptures in the whole Bible. This whole Luke 6 and 38. It ain't got nothing to do with Preachers use it all the time, talk about getting money. It ain't got nothing to do with money. It's got to do with forgiveness, all right? So here's what Jesus said. St. Luke, y'all got St. Luke, the sixth chapter in the 35th verse. I see Scott. I look, Tony Brunell is on here tonight. Amen. St. Luke, the sixth chapter in the 35th verse. Here's what he says. But love your enemies. Now, I know what kind of Bible y'all reading out of my mind is the NKJV. And do good and lend. Wait a minute, but here's here's the punchline. Hoping for nothing in return. That's it, Danny. See, Christ said you want you will never be tied to anybody. Because you ain't expecting nothing from them. See, the problem comes when I expect you to do something. When I expect you to say thank you. And you didn't say thank you. Now my thoughts just got locked up with you because you owe me a thank you. And since I didn't get a thank you, I'm walking around riding in my car, stop at the red light, and the first thing coming, I see a red car, you drive, oh, he drive, brain said, don't you remember that? He didn't say thank you. Well, that red car, he ain't in it, but the red car triggered my thought, and I said, mm, he, mm, yeah, that's right. He, he, he did go buy a new car and then pay me my money back, right? So watch this. Christ says, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. He says, if you don't expect to get nothing from the person you've given to, even if the person is your enemy, guess what? God going to reward you. You're like, man, he, I, he keep the $200. Keep the $200. I'd rather for God to give me favor. <laughs> you keep the money. Keep the money. I ain't lose no sleep over the money. I probably blew money on the weekend and didn't even know where the money went. So I'm not going to hold this thought in my head about you owe me something, right? When God is a blessing. Everything that you loan, every, every dollar that you gave, every love that you shared, God replaced it with, by giving it from somebody else, right? He, let's read it again, Tom Paul. But love your enemies and do good. And lend, hoping for nothing again. That means hoping not to receive nothing. And your reward shall be what? Great. And ye shall, let's keep reading, shall be called the children of the highest. That's capital H. <laughs> That's Heavenly Father. For he is what? Kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Wait a minute. You know what he said? You know what he said then? He said, the reason why you all not expect nothing is from people that you gave to because you don't always tell God thank you <laughs> when he gives you stuff. <laughs> he said he gives stuff to people that don't say thank you to him. It, 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 I don't know about your Bible. That's what my pastor was. Help me out. That's what my Bible says. He says, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. We're looking at the evil folk, but we ain't looking at the unthankful folk. Most people got enough sense to thank God for the food. But most, a lot of people put a period after. Let's, oh, don't eat that food without thanking God. We call it blessing the food. 
Bible call it giving thanks for the food, right? We'll, we'll sit there and pray over that food and then turn around and not thank him for a safe day, productive day, successful day, peaceful day, happy day. He said he's kind of people that don't even give him thanks. You know why? But God ain't expecting what? Nothing in return. Because if he thought, if he was tied to what we don't do for him, we'd be in some serious trouble. Are y'all still here? Are y'all still here? All right. So, so we got to give. There you go. If I give not expecting nothing in return, then my thoughts are not tied to you. It says my thoughts are not tied to you. I'm not in bondage. I'm not thinking about you. So therefore, you can't hurt my feelings because I gave it. And, and this sounds like an indictment on us, but it is. Most of us expect some return. That's the way it is. We've been brought up to be that way. I give you a gift. You give me a gift. Anyway, it's birthday time. It's birthday time. You got a birthday. I give you a birthday gift. But watch this. Watch this. This is Patricia Miller. But when my birthday comes, I expect you to what? Give me a gift. And if you don't give me a birthday gift, Sister Hooks, if they don't give you a birthday gift, now you got a what? An attitude. And the thoughts just got tied to them. Because what? They owe me. I spent my money. They should have spent some money on me. So here we go. So then I spent my money, even though nobody told me to go out to the mall. Nobody told me to go in the belts and get the birthday gift, but I did. And then they went into the Dollar Tree, which is no longer a, a Dollar Tree. It's a dollar and 25 cent tree, right? And they came in there and bought one of them little nice little ornaments that cost a dollar and 25 cent. As if they don't know that I don't go in the Dollar Tree. Then when I unwrapped that box and see the little ornament, it no cost a dollar and 25 cents. And I spent a hundred and twenty-five dollars. I'm upset. My thoughts are now tied to them because guess what? They owe me. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? All right. So he says, give, 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 give. He said, give. He said, give. The word give in Aramaic is yahav. It means to provide something. See, when we give to people. Is mean we're providing something. And what Christ has told us is that we, we should not expect something in return. Give, your heart, provide something. Luke 35 says, 6 and 35 says, but don't expect what? Nothing. Your feelings don't get hurt if you don't expect nothing in return. Yeah, but I gave it to him. Well, why? So now I want to know, uh, what was your motive for giving? I'm giving you, I'm giving you this. Listen to me, as people say this. I'm giving you this out of the love in my heart. Well, your love got real shallow when I didn't return the favor. <laughs> when, they, when they don't return the favor, all of a sudden, now I'm a, you, I can't believe that they, I can't believe. Come on, Dan, don't be putting them tears, crying eyes on me. Listen, I can't believe I did all that for them. They didn't do nothing for me. Well, what were you expecting? Why were you expecting them to return the favor? Because you should have done it out of love, which means you didn't expect them to return the favor, right? Uh -huh. We going somewhere. So our problem is we expect to something return. So so let's go back to St. Luke. We're gonna keep reading. Watch this. Here, here's his Christ talk. So we got. He said, if you don't expect to receive nothing. You got a great reward. Who's going to reward you, Tom Park? The highest. God Almighty. Right? Yahuwah. That's his name. His name is Yah. Yeshua. That's Christ. He said, if, don't worry about not getting nothing back. Because what he's going to give you is going to always be better. 36. Here we go. 36 through 38. Be therefore merciful as our Father also is what? Merciful. He said, the reason why I'm going to have mercy is because God has mercy on me. Not only does he have mercy, uh, Lamentation says, every morning he gives me new mercies. That's mercy with an S. Right? It said, number 37, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, 
and ye shall be what? Forgiven. Give, we're talking about the word Yahal, which means provide something. Provide something, and it shall be provided unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. See, when you give with no expectation, it does not mean that the person you give it to is going to return it. But God will make sure that somebody gives you, we're going to talk about what they're going to give you, gives you back more than you gave out. What is he talking about? Pastor Winston knows what this is all about. This ain't got nothing to do with money. Tom Bob, Luke 6 and 38 has nothing to do about with money. There's, there's many, hundreds of scriptures that has a lot to do with money since the promise came, but this ain't one of them. It's talking about mercy, judging, condemning, forgiving, giving love. Yeah, that's what he's talking He said, if you give out love and don't expect love in return, God going to make sure. See, the reason why we get trapped up, I ain't calling no name. I'm just going to leave the name nameless. It's because we expect, I, I just want somebody to love me. But see, when you love and you ain't expecting love, guess what God does? He gives it to you. Because you, you ain't trying to buy gifts to make somebody love you. You're buying gifts because that's who you are. You're not being nice because you just want them to think highly of you. You're being nice because that's who you are. You're not, ju not judging them because you're just trying to get on their good side. You're not judging them because you don't judge nobody. And God says, since you like that, guess what he's going to do? He gonna make somebody man. He didn't say the person that you gave to. He's gonna make some people give you right what you were not expecting to receive: love and and forgiveness and mercy and and all those wonderful things in verse thirty six through thirty seven. So our problem is we can't forgive because we're expecting the people we give to to give back, and when they don't, we get hot and we give them a piece of our mind. And when we give them a piece of mind, our mind, they grown folk. They give a piece of their mind. Now we got tension. Tension leads to conflict. Conflict leads to problem. Problem leads to now I don't like them. And then they say, well, know what? I don't like you either. You cussed me out. I cuss you out. Now we hate each other. And God said, I, I got problems with both of y'all. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I got more problem with the saint, the Christian, because you sitting up in church every Sunday. <laughs> you ought to know better. But my mind has not been repaired. I'm still living. I'm still living in the way that the world handled it. When I was in the world, this is what I did. And I walked in the church and gave my hand to the preacher and gave my heart to God. No, I didn't, because I still got my mind still operating off of how I used to handle my business. And Christ said, "You got to repair that. You got to untie those things, so that now that God can prove Himself to be mighty." All right. Y'all still here? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. That reminds me of like during election time. You see the most evil that's come out of people when it's time to vote. You know, they're <coughs> about that kind of that, that kind of thing, that kind of thing, whatever. And and even you see the same kind of bitterness people go when they go to let somebody die, go to a funeral. And then you haven't seen Sally Sue in 20 years because something happened <coughs> to Sally Sue. Because you might you told us some years ago about how you know you have not forgiven somebody or you still got some feeling, your mind has not been renewed of, of, about that person. It's because when you get in the room with that person, you got you feel nervous to I need. That's right. So, with that being said, uh, so every, like, do you think that's the reason why those feelings linger on like that? Because we don't want to forgive, we don't want to let go? It, 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 it's not that we don't want to let go. It's that we think they owe us something. Okay. See, see, I think you owe me something. And, and it, it could be a disagreement that led into an argument, right? So I'm still feeling a certain kind of way when they walk in the room. Why? Because they owe me an apology. And I'm not going to be right until they give me my apology. The, the question is, why do you have to be right? <laughs> what, what, what motivates I got to be right? Well, first of all, who's right and wrong? Everybody got an opinion. And everybody have a right. I was talking to a pastor. I said, 
He said, well, I disagree. That's your right to your opinion. I, I'm not trying to convince you to agree with me. <laughs> See? And some people just get into a fight because they, I got to be right. I'm going to win this argument. So they keep on going. Now we get, we got conflict. So what happens is we, I'm going to, he did not apologize to me. So and until he does, I'm done with him. But we you know what God just looked at you and said? Oh, so you uh, think that he owe you something? And you don't realize that God is the one that grants grace and mercy to everybody? What does, you, do you not know that it's, it's the grace of God that while we're breathing right now, God can just take the breath out of all of us, all these people on Zoom and Facebook, and we all just, with Zoom still running, just hit our face, hit, the, hit wherever the table in front of us. So what happens is, it's this whole thing that Christ talked about. You got to untie that thought that he don't owe me nothing. He don't owe me no apology. God, he don't owe me no apology. He don't owe me nothing. Because I'm a grown man. I did what I wanted to do. And it's my fault. If I gave money to somebody that don't pay money back, it's my fault. I didn't call around and say, hey, is, is John Paul ever loaned you borrowing the money? Yeah, he'll never pay no debt back. Well, whose fault is it that, that the person didn't make the phone call? And whose fault is it that he done borrowed money nine times and ain't paid you back? What makes number 10 special? So, but number 10 is the last straw. And now I, now I say he owes me. Right? No is all, I said the most powerful di uh, word in the dictionary is no. Uh -huh. But if, you, if somebody says, hey, can I loan $20? You give them 20 If they come back to you 20 times and you give it to them, do they owe you anything? No. Because you did what? You gave it to them. Gave it to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people say, uh, can you, can, I don't loan money. Lend don't mean loan. <laughs> Let me provide something that somebody needs. So yeah, I know the whole point of this lesson, the reason we can't forgive our enemies is because we just believe they owe us something. They owe us apology. They owe us, you know, I want my name back. How does somebody give you your name back? I've heard people say, I want my name back. How does that happen? How does that work? Yeah, that somebody got to give you your name. Oh, what you're really saying is, I want them to go around and tell everybody that what they said was a lie. If, I want them to call everybody that we know and tell everybody that they told that lie to that what they what they what they said was a lie. And until they the people come back to me and tell me that he told them it was a lie, I ain't over with. Christ said, guess what? Now you tied up with them. That's right. And guess what? Since, since you feel like they owe you, God like and said, but what about what you owe him? <laughs> and so he says, since you ain't willing to forgive them for what they owe you, he says, he's not going to forgive us for what we owe him. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. It's all about owing. I told, I told one of my spiritual daughters called me and she had this bad experience. And I said, well, you should have, you should have checked. The Bible said, prove all things. And she got invited to dinner. And after, you know, she said, and then the guy took her to Ruth Chris. Now, we know that Ruth Chris favorite place you go every week. You go there for birthdays and special events. <laughs> Ruth Chris, you go, you go to Ruth Chris with two people. You're working out with $300, right? And, and, and so she said, I can't believe the statement he made after the dinner. I said, what was the statement? He said, you ready to go back to my house? She said, I am offended that this man insulted me, that he, he wanted me to go to his house. I said, I'm going to tell you what the problem with him is. He's thinking, since I spent $300, you owe me. I <laughs> said, so that's it. Y'all, it's all that does on the internet. You owe me. Yeah. <laughs> does that make sense? You owe me. And I said, well, first of all, did you know him? No, I didn't. So why, when he said Ruth Crisp, why did you just think that he's going to roll and spend all that money without expectations? Right, right. He had his, his thoughts was, I'm giving to receive. Her thought was, he just give, he's just a nice guy. <laughs> they don't work that way. Nicole, you're not muted yourself. Not that they don't. Oh, see, God gave us all these emotions. He has all these emotions. He made us this way. So, you know, it sounds like we just, I mean, okay. So on a, on a daily basis or under normal circumstances, 
you know, you, you, whether it's your family or your man or your woman or whatever, and you're doing things for them, you're giving, you, it's, it's a natural thing to want to get something back, like a thank you. A thank you can be good enough. So, I mean, if you don't get that, you know, you're doing it time and time and time again, and you never get a thank you back. God made us with these emotions. So what, what does he want us to do with them? To say, okay, I forgive you. And just go through life, you know, just keep giving and giving and getting nothing back. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I understand. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said it because you're not the only one to understand. First of all, let me clarify that God didn't give us our emotions. He gave us thoughts. He gave us a brain and a mind. Our, our thoughts and emotions are created by what David said. I was born in sin, but I was shapen in iniquity. Somebody shaped us to behave a certain way. We didn't come here knowing nothing. Our brain was, our brain was blank. We couldn't even pick up a spoon and feed ourselves. We didn't, couldn't even walk. Somebody shaped everything about us. We saw things, we experienced things, and it created a certain either strength or insecurity. High self-esteem or low self-esteem. Whatever shape the individual, right, is the is created the emotions of how they feel about what they feel about. That's why Paul says we got to repair that. He said, "Don't don't be whatever you learn in the world growing up." He said, "That ain't gonna work in the kingdom. You got to repair that mind. You got to repair those thoughts so you don't think like the world." I expect to get something because he said the world in that text, he said the world expect to give and receive. He said, but don't expect to receive nothing from the person because the greater reward is coming from who? Come from God. Now, we can back, 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 roll the tape back and said, be careful. He said, come out from among thee. There's certain people we should have never dealt with. I mean, that's, that wasn't God talking to us. That was our thoughts because we were expecting something from them, see? I'm expecting something from it. They're going to open the door for me, or they're going to take me places, or they're going to introduce me to certain people. They're going to help me with a job. See, I'm, all, I'm always looking for somebody to give me something back in return, so I'm going to give to them. And when they fall short, now my thoughts are tied up. And what, what Christ is saying is, don't owe nobody nothing but to love them. Yeah. Don't nobody tip. Look, nobody gives you a gift unless you start giving gifts. When you bring people, they, they giving you a gift is not on their mind. But when you first give them a gift, guess what they think? Oh, I owe them a gift. That doesn't mean they're a good person. They just feel like, well, you gave me a gift. I gave you a gift. What if you gave somebody a gift and they didn't give you a gift back? Then you would say, I can't believe that I gave them a gift. And then, well, did you establish that up front that knowing our friendship, we're going to give gifts? No, we don't. We just think, well, that's who I am. So if I do it, they're going to do it back to me. But if you're really giving it out of love, why would you expect to get receive it back unless you sit down and both agree? We're going to do that. And that's the thoughts that get tied up. Yeah, you know, that, like, you, like you say, that's why I love to ask them follow far from the tree. You know, if your daddy was no good, your mom was no good, chance are you not going to be any good? And then you think about how I see situations. I've, I've got some friends right now. They were they were in a racist household. I mean, the parents could not stand black people. But yet still, they determined, I'm not going to be like my mom. I'm not going to entertain these thoughts. I'm going to raise my kids to love the person, not look at their color. So, we, you know, I guess that goes to come, come to show that God gave us choices. You know, we can grab on to what we've been taught that's maybe evil. We can grab on what we have not been taught or grab on what what uh, what we want to do and what we love to do that is right. That's why that Bible is so important to read it, to, uh, to, you know, to get understanding about life and how we would treat others. Yeah, see, God, 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 God's only requirement of us is to do it his way. <laughs> It, it ain't no like, well, pick and choose. Like, do it my way. He said, he said today you stand at the crossroad. You got good and evil. Pick, choose. Do the wrong. He said, there's a good path and a bad path. Good path leads good, all these good things. You make bad decisions, choose that path. Lead all those things. What Paul comes back and said is, work on that mind, always choose good. How do I choose good? Because I have enough word to know that this doesn't line up with God. And if it doesn't line up with God, it cannot line up with me. 
I don't care how the glitter and, and how green the grass looks and how pretty is, you know, there is something that looks gold. Have you ever seen one of them ring? We say, oh, that is a beautiful ring. And you buy the ring, you know, and you go down to Myrtle Beach, and the first time the salt water hit it and you sweat, it start turning green. You say, what is wrong with this gold? Because it was really never gold. It, it wasn't even gold plated. It was just gold dipped. And so consequently, we make an now we now our mind, our thoughts are tied up. How could that person give me that? Because you missed the whole point. It wasn't the value of the gift or the value of the thought. They could not have given you what? Anything. They just maybe had low self-esteem and couldn't tell you that was a $19.99 ring they saw on TV. But you thought it was a $1,999 ring. As if you were valuable to them. See, it's all about value. So what Christ is saying is, and this is this is the hard part for people to swallow. He said, if you don't expect nothing, first of all, he, he didn't say give to everybody. Christ didn't heal everybody. But he said, if you're dealing with me, then don't expect nothing in return. Because your greatest gift is not coming from a man. It's coming from the men that God going to send. God ain't dropping money bags in your, on your front porch. He sent people. And those people will give you more than what you could re ever receive from an individual. And so therefore we must untie our thoughts that people owe us. Yeah. And then again, it's a repairing thing. It, it ain't an overnight thing. I'm going to lay down tonight and I'm going to wake up tomorrow. My, my thoughts going to be rearranged. No. If you don't live 60 years, that's 60 years of getting them thoughts all tangled up. <laughs> Got along, you start writing down all the people that you don't like that owe you stuff. Boy, and now you realize, oh my God, some of those people are dead, some people moved away. How do I deal with that? You don't deal with that. You deal with you. I'm going to tie these thoughts going forward, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to line my thoughts up to the way God thinks and Christ has told us. He said, give, love the enemies, lend, expecting what? To receive nothing. Did he say give everybody, didn't he? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. See, that's where we messed up because... It's like a person told me, they said, well, when I'm, we had this thing, Pastor Wood used to have on, on Family Day, and we had questions and answers. It always came to this one question, like, you see the people on the side of the road with the little sign, like, you know, help me, I'm, I'm, I'm in need of help. And we feel so good about ourselves because we give them $5, $1, $10, $20. So somebody said, well, Bishop Park, what do you do? I rolled down my window and said, do you know Jesus Christ? <laughs> That's what I say. Do you know Jesus Christ? If they say no, then I witness to them. They said, do you give them some money? Of course not. I don't give them money. I said, but if, if, if you witness, if you accept Jesus Christ and put yourself in a church, I'll help you get a job. You know what most of them say? Thank you. And turn it back to me. Because what they want is what? Something else. They were expecting something else. And I'm sure when my car just cruised away from that stop sign, their thoughts was tied up on me. I can't believe it. I can't believe my sign said won't need money, and he talking about Jesus Christ. You see? So what do you expect? When I give, I expect God going to bless me because I gave. But God also said, don't throw your pearls among swine. And don't give what's holy to dogs. And I'm not calling nobody no pig, no dog. I'm just repeating the quote the scripture. You got to know who to give to. But when you give it, you give it expecting to receive nothing. All right? All right let's go a little deeper. Rip. Am I talking to him? Am I talking? Talk? Yeah, now, now if you make bad choices and get with the wrong people, that ain't God's fault. But you got to watch and pray. You got to watch and pray. Look, you in a building with people, you ain't, your ears ain't open to see that John don't, don't, don't repay nobody, but you're going to be the good person because you pray with John, he prayed with you, so his heart has changed, so I'm going to give to John. You already got the record on John, right? But if you do give to John and don't expect John to pay you back, you can never get mad. You got to untie yourself. You got to untie yourself. Number two, you got to remind yourself of what the Lord does for us. Let's go to Isaiah 38 and 17. We can see, we forget. We say thank you. We've been preaching to our parks on this sermon series about lifestyle. We're so thankful that we're not grateful. Grateful and thankful are two different things. The joy, this joy I have, joy is being grateful, Right? That's why some people live in a one-bedroom studio and they're happy. 
And some people got a three to five bedroom house and they're miserable. You know why? They're not grateful. Thankful means I only am happy when I get something. So when God don't give me nothing physically, then I think I'm not happy. Grateful is I'm just thankful for what he's already done. Let, let's go to Isaiah 38 and let's get this word. So the, we got to repair the mind, right? Got on top said this is what this is all about. Isaiah 38. And I know it's hard. I know it seems hard. It ain't hard. It seems hard only because we have tied ourselves up to these thoughts for so long. The brain don't want to let it go. That's why a person who owns drugs can't get rid of drugs because their mind is all tied up on it. That's why a person who drinks, a person who steals, keeps stealing, right? The mind is a terrible thing. Yeah. Pursue lie. It ain't like they want to lie. They, they, it's part of their lifestyle. Isaiah 38. Person who's jealous. They're jealous of everybody. And so on and so on. Isaiah 38 and 17. Let's get it. Behold, for peace, I had great bitterness. And look at Isaiah said, I, I'm, I should, have had, have, should have had peace, but I'm walking around bitter and upset, right? Going through my emotions, right? But thou hast in love to my son. But he said, but God, <laughs> you love the hell out of me. That's what he's kind of paraphrasing. He said, I'm walking around all grumpy and mad and miserable. And these people owe me and they paid me. These people mistreated me. And they ain't done this. And, you know, I'm getting old. Verse number 12, my, my age is, verse 12 says, I'm getting older now. And I ain't got a whole lot of time ahead of me. And guess what he says? He says, but thou hast in love to my soul, delivered it from the pit of corruption. It could have been worse. My life could be a mess. My life could just be like some people. My mind could be completely gone. He said, for thou hast cast. Listen, he ain't talking about his, his life shifted because of the things, Tom Paul. He said, for thou hast cast all my sins behind the back. Behind. He said, the reason why my mind shifted is because when I think about all the things I've done and all the crazy thoughts I've had and all the crazy people that I've been around, God, you should have dealt with me a long time ago because some of my friends were with me and they did the same things I did and bad things happened to them. But for me, God, you took all of my sins and threw my sins behind your back. So that you don't even see all the sins I've committed. And, and he said, that turned my, my bitterness back to where it's supposed to be. See, there we go, Tom Paul's with them thoughts, right? I, I, gotta, I gotta take time out to quit complaining about what's not right and think about what God made right. Yeah, the job I have, if you got a great job, do you think you deserve that? Of course not, right? Where you live, do you think that nice place, you deserve that? Of course not. Because we all sin. We just found out if you don't have faith, it's a sin. Unless you confess the faith, that uh, confess that you don't have faith, God sees it as a sin. And guess what? The wages of sin is death. So technically speaking, we should die. But God does this. He takes all of this, all them crazy thoughts, all of the stuff we say. God's a mind reader. Everything in our heart. And, and get, because he loves us, we he takes it and throws it behind his back. And all he's saying is, if he can do it for us, then why can't we do it for others? But you know why we can't do it, Tom Paul? Because we we we're claiming all this. I work for all this, and you did, and you bought everything. But what you didn't do is give yourself strength, didn't give yourself intelligence. Right, your mind should have been blown out a long time ago, but you, you're sitting here intelligent, operating, moving. See, we get so caught in, caught up into me, we forget about him, and the mind ought to be thinking about him. Yeah, I, I think I told y'all last time this guy. I was getting promoted so fast, a few white guys decided they was going to destroy my career, and I ain't seen him in about thirty years, Sister Hooks. Thirty years later, and they come walking into. I was in this. Venue where I was teaching on a leadership. Guess who come rolling up in there? The big white guy. And I said, Hey, you come on over and give me a hug. They said, You hugging us? I said, Man, I'm telling you, I'm hugging you. They said, But we tried to destroy your career. 
I said, I want to say thank you. They said, why? I said, because you made me pristine and be exact. You made me to where I thought about things to, to make sure my eyes was you know, dotted and my T's were crossed. You made me be the best person I was, and guess what? I became the head and not the tail. <laughs> I became above all. If you three guys hadn't showed up, I probably would have been slowful. But because y'all was on me, looking at everything I did, it made me pinpoint with pinpoint accuracy. And they sat there and dropped their head, and tears came to their eyes. And they said, guess what they said? I'm sorry. I said, don't say sorry to me. I said, I'm saying thank you out of sincerity. See, so we would have looked at it on the nail like, them guys tried to hurt me, and I'm in this class. I'm getting ready to wear them out of this session, right? So, look, I'm the teacher. They the student. I'm getting ready. Every example I got is going to be pinpointing them. But guess what? I, don't expect, I didn't expect nothing in return from them. I didn't expect them to say that they, they were sorry. Because guess what? Favor comes from God. Yeah, the level they try to stop me, I was, I ended up four levels above that. So why would I, why would I sit there and hold all that grudge in my heart? And God looked at me and said, you don't deserve to get promoted to be a senior executive because you don't know how to, you don't know how to handle your business. So God hides our sins behind his back. He said, there's no reason for having bitterness when you think about what he's done. All right, let's go a little deeper. Last one. Go to Hebrews 12. Last, it's not hard. We got our entire self. We got to repair our mind, right? Repair our thoughts. Don't give, expect, and receive nothing. You can't get hurt if you did. You get with no, expecting not to receive nothing. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Stop me, y'all. Y'all this. I, I know I know I can count on her. I can count on, I can count on Denny Cash. Amen. They ask questions when they when they have want to know something a little bit more deeper. So that's why we're here. This is not a lecture or a study. This is Bible study. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. 1 and 2. Here we go. Hebrews 12, 1. He says, For for seeing we are compassed about with such great cloud of witnesses. In other words, why is this all happening to me? He said, uh, it ain't boo boo, it ain't only happening to you. <laughs> he said, it's a whole lot of people involved. It's a whole lot of people going through. The devil don't just like, not like you. He just like everybody. Why keep messing up? You ain't the only one keep messing up. It's a whole lot. They tell, you just tell it that everybody else keeping the mouth quiet, right? This is what he says. Let us. Us, not let me, let us. That means this, this, this crowd of witnesses. Lay aside every weight. Are y'all reading Romans 12 and 1? And the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. All right, we got to go in here and break some words down. He said, lay aside. Sister Brooks, the word lay aside, Aaron Lega, Shalem, Shalem. And Shalem means let go. He said, I'm praying, God, help me. With, he said, Paul said, ain't no praying in this. Just let it go. <laughs> he said, Shalem, let go. Let, let. But I don't want to let it go. Well, that's why you're going to be miserable. See, you're going to stay miserable. And some people love pain because they would have no life if there was no drama. I, I, if I let go of the drama, then what am I supposed to think about? Well, we just told you what to think about. Everything else that's part. Paul said, lay aside. The word lay aside, shalim, means let go of something. Right? In Greek, it means give up something contrary to God's will. Lay aside means give up, let it go. The word weight in Aramaic is miskal. It means burden. So Paul said, here we go. Let go of the burden. Lay aside the weight means let go of the burden. Let me read it. Let me put, let me insert the translation so you get the right context. He says, wherefore we're seeing we are all encompassed about such a great cloud of witness, which means there's a whole lot of people going through. There's a whole lot of people honoring God, a whole lot of people being uh, the favor of God. He said, let us let go of the burden and the sin. Because when I don't trust God to do it, 
but trust God to teach me, trust God's word to follow it, then I lack faith. And then I just sin. And instead of God doing something good for me, he can't. Because guess what? All he sees is unforgiven sin. And God won't hear the prayer of nobody who has unforgiven unforgiveness in their heart. We're going to get to the scripture. If you got unforgiveness in your heart, God, you pray. I, we went in. You went. I want to know where did you go? <laughs> because you didn't go into the throne room of grace. You went somewhere, but God wasn't there. He said, let it go. Let go of what? The burden. Uh huh. And the sin. And that means that and combines those two together. The burden creates the sin. Which what? Does so easily beset us. The word beset and Aramaic. Here we go. You'll love this, Danny. It's Shirak. You know what Shirak means? Hemmed in. Hemmed in means I'm tied up. <laughs> so he says, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this, uh, Burnett. He says, let go of the burden and the sin that's hemming you in. It's keeping you from obtaining what God wants you to get. Because you hemmed in. You tied to something. Hemmed in means I I, I'm trying to get out, but I can't. It's just like, uh, you know, a horse. Poor horse, ride, ride, ride. And the time they stop, they take the, the look, what you call it, the reins and tie it around the pole. Guess what? He him in. He can't go nowhere. So Paul says, let go of the burdens and the sin that's him and you in. Right? Let go of the burden. I but they did all this to me. He said, let go of the burden. If y'all ever heard, the battle's not yours. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Oh, yes. That means I gotta what? I, I gotta I gotta do what? Uh I gotta do what Tam? I gotta let go of this burden. If I believe that the battle is truly the Lord, why am I still trying to hold on to the battle? If the battle is truly the Lord, I Paul said, let go of the burden and the sin that's attached to it. And Stop being him in and get running. Get the running. <laughs> you might not know how to let go of the bird. Huh? How you let go of the bird. I've been talking for, for two, two Tuesdays and been about an hour here tonight. You got to change the way you think. You got to untie them thoughts. Right? Do you remember me saying that? Yes. You got to quit expecting. You got to quit expecting something from them. You, I'm waiting on the apology. Well, how long are you prepared to wait? Some people ain't never going to apologize. So you live your whole life, 60 years of life, not having no peace, waiting for somebody to apologize who don't even know Jesus Christ. What in the world? What are we? What? What? When they in the church, who says that because they're in the church, they know God? Yeah. You got to be in church is not does not mean that you know God. It's a great place to come. You can sit there and be in a tank for two hours and ain't got to put nothing in there that you want to. <laughs> it's the only it's the only building I know that you can go in and come out go in with your money and come out with the same money unless you want to give something. Everybody else charged at the door. You see, so so you got to say my thoughts got to change. I got to I got to untie my thoughts to that person, which means now you don't owe me nothing. You don't owe me no apology. You don't owe me no repayment. You're not going to burden me. You're not going to hinder God from blessing me. There ain't nobody on the planet so valuable that I'm going to mess up with God. I'm not messing up with God because what the, most of uh, Tad is trivial anyway. It ain't like they took a gun and shot us in the chest. It ain't nothing like that. Now, that right there is going to be hard to, to get over, right? Most times it's a lie. They, you know, they didn't apologize. They didn't say thank you. Right? Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child. I spoke as a child, but when I became a grown-up, I put away all them kitty, kitty things. Don't play with my toy. I'm mad at you. But kids got enough sense to get mad. And two hours later, guess what? They'll be still playing if the parents don't get involved. Because the kids have not been shaping yet. But as they get older, we shape them. Somebody shape them. Girl, I wouldn't take that from him. I wouldn't take that from them. And you sit there and listen to them instead of listening to the word of God. What's the use of coming to church and not paying no attention? And that's what we do. Because we're waiting on the one thing that, that we that we looking for and ignore everything else. All right? So Paul says, Tom Paul, let go of the burden. And the sin that goes with it. Because the lack of faith is sin. 
And he said, and quit being him and him then. Because there's a race to run. One day God going to call our name and that name is going to make, we're going to find ourselves standing before the judgment seat of God. It's too late to say, well, God, you know what? Uh, can I explain a few things? <laughs> there's no explanation. God said, the rich man said, can you send him back to go tell my brothers? He said, look, they got Moses and the prophets. You got the preacher. If you don't hear the preacher, then sending somebody back from the dead won't change nobody that don't want to change their thoughts. All right. So why is unforgiveness such a crime? Let's go to Psalm 66 and 18. That's where we're going to stop. Psalm 66 and 18. If you didn't get nothing, dang, dang. If you didn't get nothing else I said tonight, I want you to get Psalm, take Psalm 66 and 18, find a big book marker, a piece of tape, something. I don't care what you got. And I want you to mark it in the Bible in red, put stars all around it. And every time that thought come up, it will come up because the flesh is a terrible thing. The flesh don't want us to forget nothing. It just want to be happy and don't like to be uh, 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 stressed or anything. Psalm 66 and 18. 66 and 18, I'm there. Wait a minute, let me see. That's, that's the wrong scripture, 66. Hold on just one second. Let me get this. Let me get I, I'm talking about my, when I'm trying to type, I'm typing so fast. It'd be flowing so fast, Tom Paul. All right, let me get the right scripture. So yeah, Psalm, Psalm oh, I mean Isaiah no one. Psalm sixty six and eighteen. You got it? Yes. What does it say? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity, iniquity in my heart, God will not forgive me. Oh my God. Take your pen. Take your highlighter, your yellow highlighter, your green, your blue, and all other colors that you carry around. Because some people love, love to be colorful. And you put that right there, scripture. Matter of fact, get your typewriter. If you can't type, get somebody to type it out. And say, put that on your refrigerator with the magnet like they do back in the day. When they didn't want to forget nothing, they get, took the refrigerator with a little magnet. Put it, so every time you go to the refrigerator, you won't forget this. He says, look, look, Danny, look at this. If I regard iniquity, if I hold something in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I might as well start praying right now, leave the church, go home, get drunk every Sunday, and just have a good life. Because guess what? God ain't heard nothing I had to say. And that explains why we're not as far along as we should be. Well, I'm doing good. Well, you should be doing great. Doing good. Everybody's doing good. The guy next door that's an atheist doing good. The guy that, that uh, had a party last night with beer cans all over his front yard, he's doing good. The people that go down to the club, they're doing good. So we, oh, I'm blessed. Well, everybody blessed. He reigns on what? The just, unjust. But have your prayers been answered? I'm not the one, the, the prayers been answered because of mercy, because God is mercy. He do something because he's just good. But have they been answered? For you, your children, your children, children, children. If the answer is not, maybe somewhere God stopped listening to your prayers. He said, if you were whole unforgiveness in your heart, iniquity, bad thoughts about people and things that you say hurt you, even though you let them do it. He said, God will, on all are you listening to me? God will not hear us. He cut, cut all the prayers out of the church service. Be careful who you put in the pulpit praying for everybody. Because they sit up there with all that stuff up in their heart. They don't like the people they pray. I, I talked to a pastor. I had to, I had to mentor him, Tom. He, I mean, him, he was talking so bad about the members of this church. I said, you sound like you don't like the, like the people. You're passing a group of people. He's made them people get on my nerves. I just hate them. I said, you can't hate the people you pass. I said, you think God here? No one of you stressed out. Because God ain't heard nothing you had to say. That right there's that right there's one of them drop the mic moments, like drop the mic. <laughs> all this church and all I'm a Christian, I love God, don't mean nothing if God don't hear you. And guess what? Here we go on over. He said, if you if you hold on to this in your heart, uh -huh. he said he will not what? Forgive you. Hear you. He won't, he won't hear you. He won't hear your prayer. Mm. When I stumble across 
people I, people have heard me say they say you say you say keep saying you got delivered from people I say I did they uh -huh. said they said well what you do you go on a fasting and pray for 21 days what did you do I said I just stumbled across Psalm 16 and 18 <laughs> and when I saw that God won't hear nothing I gotta say Brenda Brooke hooks when I discovered a long time ago that God wasn't hearing nothing I had to say because I was holding stuff against people. My thoughts changed immediately. That's right. Yeah. I'm on sin, but guess what? Some things is in my heart. See, some things are fleshy, but some things are buried in your heart. And God said he sees all everybody's heart. He said, if you don't, if you holding that, been holding for 20 years or whatever, God said he ain't heard nothing you said. And if all you're living off of right now is mercy. Uh -huh. And God says he wants to do more. He'll give, he'll let men give into your bosom, press down, shaking uh -huh. together. They'll love you so much. They'll treat you like you ought to be treated. Yeah, uh -huh. they'll give you the, 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 the kinds of things that God wants you to have. Now, now Brother Malcolm Lewis, I know this is a mouthful tonight. But you know what? Everything is a choice, right? Everything's a choice. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm standing here getting ready to have a birthday. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling a little Joshua-ish. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. What does that mean, Bishop Bob? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm making it my conviction every moment. I'm pressing and trying to make sure that I do it his way. Especially when I read Psalm 66 and 18. Because what's the use of getting on my knees, Aunt Ola, after finding out that he ain't heard nothing that's right. I had to say? Everything I got is just pure mercy. And that's why the church, uh, and not everybody, but, but a lot of people in church are miserable, broke, and yet the, but yet they try to invite people to come. And they wonder, why people don't come? I invite them, they don't come because they're living better than you. And there's no way our father can be so rich on everything and we not be where he wants us to be. I'm going to tell you why we're not there. Because of Psalm 66 to 18. Are there any questions before we go? I, I hear complete silence. <laughs> Then it's like, no, I can't <laughs> so what's that on old? Put that on our forehead, it came with a mirror all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a choice. Huh? Yes, it is. That was a double mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Brother Lewis said that was a double, Brother Malcolm Lewis said that was a double mic. But see, that we, we, we attempt in this Bible study, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that we don't take up no offerings. We just, you just come, you know, I don't care if it's 50 or one. If it was one person on here, I would not say, okay, we're going to make this brief because I'm, I'm working out my soul salvation. We're trying to make sure to the best of our ability that the word of God is given with truth, right? And what would it be like for me to know that scriptures in there, but not give it to you? We need, we need to know that scriptures in there. Everybody on Zoom and Facebook need to know that if you're holding stuff in your heart, even though you're pressing in and soaking and fasting and praying and doing all this stuff, God, like, why are you wasting all that time? He's not hearing nothing you got to say until you get that thought and that, what he call iniquity, unforgiveness, going against his will, going against his laws, get it straight. Then he'll, th then, he, then as he said, he'll take him and throw our sins, what? Behind his back. Which means he can't even remember the sin no more. All right? All right. Thank y'all so much. Y'all are so wonderful to take spend an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes of Bible study with us. You could be on any channel. You could be doing anything. There's so many great teachers and preachers around. You thought it out, Robert, just to tune in and, and to share your time with us. And we really appreciate it. And we also invite you over to the City of Hope on Sunday morning. Our services start at 10 o'clock a.m. Amen. By 11.45, 12 o'clock, depends on how the Spirit is moving up in the house. Then uh, we end and we praise God. We get a word and then we leave. But it's the word of God. Amen. And I pray that you consider coming on over. As they say, come try and see. And see what the Lord is doing over on this side of town. All right? All right. Thank you.
You're very welcome. Is Pastor Woods, Pastor Weston, open up? Pastor Woods, are you there? So, I'm here. All right, there you go. All right, Pastor Woods. Why don't you give us the closing prayer and the benediction? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God, for our life, our health, and our strength. We thank you, God, for the Bible study on tonight. <coughs> Teach us more about forgiveness and what it means for us to forgive and God to forgive us. God, we thank you because you let us know what the words mean so that we can have a closer walk with you, God. We thank you, God, because we have the thirst for the knowledge. We have a desire to know. And, God, we thank you because we are going to leave this place, not only as hearers of your word, but doers of your word. And, God, we thank you right now for <coughs> God, who not only gives us your word, but puts it in a way that makes it so palatable for us. God, we thank you for all of those listening ears, all of those accepting hearts. And we ask God right now to bless us as we leave this, this study and help us to be what you want us to be. We ask it all in the power and authority afforded us through the Jesus Christ. Now unto him that loved us and has washed us from our sin in his own blood. And has made us kings and priests before God and his Father. Unto him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. 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 And amen. And amen. amen. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good to see you, little brother. Amen. Amen. God good. Let's give and not look for anything in return. Let's trust and believe our God. No matter.